Hey, it's AK Option Trader back at you again, looking at some stock charts, technical analysis, and uh, even some market commentary if we have enough time. Um, apologize for last week. Uh, like I said, I had to go get some teeth yanked in one of my kids' mouths, so was un unable to post on uh, Wednesday and Thursday, and then of course market was closed Friday. Um, but now we're back to full week of trading, so things should slightly get back to normal here. Um, if you've noticed, uh, last week volatility seemed to increase a bit, um, and that's something I talked about last week. I was noticing a slight increase in volatility, and I, I don't know if it's going to continue. It looks like it might, um, but let's look at the VIX to kind of get an idea of what we're looking at here. When I pull back the VIX, this is a five-year daily on the VIX. One thing I want you to notice is that the VIX range trades a lot. I mean, for long terms and a lot. So in this five-year chart, this is 05 to 07 here. And you can see it kind of had a real nice range here. Bottom, it had a bottom of uh, 10 and a top, you know, with some breakouts near 1750. You could count up to here at 24 at times. It would break out to a little bit of highs. But it basically had a range that it lived in before it broke out, took out, went out to new highs, and then it started a new range here. And this was from uh, uh, July of 07 to August of 08 for a little over a year. So I kind of had a range area here. Boom, boom, boom. Broke out to the upside, came right back down. And I'm thinking it looks like we might start another range here in this area here. Uh, same type of thing, it's 16 to 30 area. Perhaps it's even going to be down to the 28 area. But it looks like we're in a consolidation mode here, very similar to this pattern back here in a similar range. Um, and I think this uh, market could be comfortable in this area for quite a while, um, which would coincide with what we're going to look at at some of the other charts today. Uh, again, still, I still believe that we're going to get a nice bounce off this 16 down here. Um, I still think it's going to be a pretty significant bounce. And I, I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see it come all the way up here to 30 plus. Um, eventually you know not in a straight line obviously but come on up you know down up down up and eventually get back up here and then come back down and stay in this range so I'll be watching this very closely over the next few months perhaps even the next year uh, uh, it'll be an indicator as to what's going on right now currently it's you know trending up on the indicators but I don't know that I trust the indicators as much on the VIX as I do the other stuff so let's look at some of the indices here we're gonna look at monthly charts since we're at the end of the month we usually do this, pull back and look at the monthly charts to see where we're at. Start with the Dow. Obviously, the indicators are still rising pretty strong on the Dow. RSI, the MACD. Volume still not great. I mean, it's just not very good volume, but the market's still rising. The Dow uh, came off, took out this 200 moving average easy, took out the 20 moving average easy. Now you can see we're coming up against the 50 here. And if you look back here, you can see the 50 does offer uh, some support resistance or some magnetic characteristics. You can see right here it offered a lot of support. You can see coming up it offered some resistance, not a lot. And uh, if history has an bearing, we'll probably stall out in this area before breaking out to the top side of it if we're going to go higher. Um, so I'd be looking for some stall out into the 50 moving average area, which currently is around 11,100, somewhere in that area, 11,200. You know, anywhere in there, it's probably going to start moving up a little bit as this market continues to move up. So I'd say I'd be looking for a slowdown or stall out on the Dow in that area, which would coincide with this little consolidation here, this three month, two month consolidation back here. If you look at the SPX, a little more interesting, as you can see, it came up, took out the 200, retested the 200, like I love, and it's taken back off. Looks like a real strong move to the upside. Indicator still heading up pretty strong. Looks like a real strong move to the upside. The 200 plays a real, or the 200, the 20 moving average plays a significant role on the SPX, as you can see back here in the future. Even this retest of the top, which would have been a great down uh, uh, short entry point. And the 50, not as much. Um, you know, the 50 tends to be a magnet for this thing. If you look back here at the beginning of 04, it just kind of hung out on the 50 moving average. I'm wondering if we're going to see the same thing here. It's going to come up, hit this 50, and just kind of hang out. Right now at the 50 is a, at a 1227 area. You know, and obviously that's going to move up a little bit as this market moves up. But you can see it's just been magnetic, even back here in 01. Every time it get, gets near it, it just kind of consolidates on it, even back in here. So that's what I'd be looking for. Maybe it'll stall out before a move up or stall out before a drop on that 50. Now the NASDAQ is obviously the strongest of the ones, the ones I, I keep saying I think is going to lead this market lower when it does turn around, and it will turn around eventually. You can see here that the 50s plays a real strong role 
uh, on the NASDAQ. It did here, three days of consolidation before it broke out. But the NASDAQ's already took out the 200, the 20, and the 50, and it's heading up to the top Bollinger Band. Uh, you know, that's not super significant because it just can slide up the top of it if you look in the past. And it very well could do the same type of thing. One thing I want you to point, I want to point out to you though, is this is the first of them to enter the over bot area and it's sliding into there now the problem with this is this whole time back here it hang out hung out in the overbought area so it can do that for a long time the MACD however seems to be a lot flatter than the other indices and it just actually even seems to be just going sideways alright so the RSI is showing it's still strong but the MACD shows it kind of flattening down I still think once the market turns the NASDAQ is going to be our leader so keep an eye on that and then uh, let's look at the Russell because we've been watching it so much lately the Russell's real curious to me. It's already on the 50 moving average. You can see it closed on it last month, and we're opening right on top of it this month. This is April, so, you know, it's not a doji star. It's just start for this month. But again, if you look back to 08, at the beginning of 08, this thing just moved right along the side of it, just slid right along the 50. I would think we're probably going to see a very similar thing here. We're going to see a lot of sideways action, probably a lot of range trading here, you know, 100 points, uh, 90 point kind of trading range like we had back here. Um, and we're probably going to see the same type of thing here. Uh, the, the 20 moving average offered a lot of support. We already took that out. So that's what I'm going to be looking for here. The indicators are actually pointing up real strong. I'm going to look for the RSI to come up and kind of flatten out and the MACD to do the same. So that's what all that for the indices. We're not going to look at uh, uh, the dailies on here, but we will look at some dailies on some individual stocks. So let's get to it. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the, uh, I want to show you the Euro US dollar. I forgot I wanted to show this too. So let's get started with the Euro US dollar. If you look at this, it, it rallied uh, right up in the 20 moving averages, kind of hang out sideways. But what I like is it looks like it's forming a top right here. I don't know, like, but I, I think this thing is forming a top off this off move off the bottom Bollinger Band. Um, this is a pretty strong move up. Um, but you can see it failed to break out. It kind of formed a top and now it's kind of dropping lower. So just watch this buck 36 or what is this actually if we, we have to get in closer here since we're on the euro. You have to watch this level right here, this high of this candle. Um, that high was 1.3591. All right. And the high here was 1 or 1 1.3591. So obviously it opened up at the exact same spots heading down. So watch this right in here and this level here on the euro US dollar for the breakout but right now it looks to me like it's going to hold there uh, and probably turn over and uh, head back down and probably make a new low so that's what it's looking like um, and we'll see what happens with that of course if as the uh, euro drops the dollar rises the dollar rises the market will probably tank a little bit anyway let's look at JC JCPenney's uh, just for fun um, I was looking at this the other day and it looked to me like it was getting ready to break out to the upside up here and, and probably pop out to a new high right here I like these kind of moves there. It's not truly a bull flag. It's just kind of a drop down with a, a usually has a nice white one, two, three candles up or something like that. But then, you know, I was looking at monthly charts <clears throat> and I found something curious. So we pop back out and if we get rid of the, oops, the drawings here. If you look at the studies, look at this. It's right up on the monthly, right on the 20, 200 moving average. And man, it is finding a hard time breaking through that 200 moving average. So I'm not so confident on it now. Confident on it, now. Uh, it did pop up above it one month, but it came right back. Uh, beneath it. So until we get a clear breakup of that uh, 200 moving average, I don't know that I'm going to be trading that thing long. Let's go back to one year and let's look at a couple other ones here. UNG. <coughs> I haven't looked at UNG in a while. Just a nice bullish engulfing candle near bottom. Obvious support formed here. Looks like this thing's ready to pop to the upside a little bit. Um, DYIN. DYN, pardon me. I like this. It's a low cost stock. Uh, buck 25 right now and I just like the support it's got right here that's all I'm looking at just got a little bit of support right there um Oops, turn drawing off. Got a little bit of sort of 121. So uh, just watch for this to hold if it breaks and you can short it. All right, pretty darn simple. I like those kinds and I like better if I put the correct ticker symbol in. Digital River is another one here. Uh, right on the 200 moving average. So I've moved back up, gapped into it. It's failed to break above it. So keep an eye on this to see if this holds. If this 200 moving average does not give way soon, if it doesn't close above it next day or two, it's going to fill this gap, I think. So I'll be looking to play it to the downside. Okay. Uh, and let's go ahead and throw Amazon in there, AMZN. Just looks real bearish. I'm going to look for the uh, support here. 
down in this area at 125.75. Um, if it does break that, I'll probably be looking down for the 200 moving average. Uh, but I'll be looking for some support down in this area here. So that's it. We got a little bit of news next week. Uh, most of it on Thursday is the jobs numbers. Uh, that'll probably be our market mover for the week. Uh, the rest of them are, you know, medium, medium impact type news. So we got a full week of trading. Uh, be looking for the blog, the updates, and charts on Twitter. This will be AK Option Trader signing off. Trade well and prosper.